Good morning, my soccer universe. Yeah, it was not my evening yesterday. I'm wearing Germany, but not very proudly, as you know, Germany is the enemy. I was not about to wear Germany, I was about to wear Sweden, and then I said, well, that's the reason why I bought the Germany jersey, is to wear it uh, for those videos, not really out. I have to say, I really, the more I look at this one, I really like this jersey. I really like this jersey, I'm sorry to say. Well, let's get right to it. This was the big game yesterday, Netherlands, Germany. Germany actually surprised the Dutch uh, for the first 20, 30 minutes or so uh, by really, really, really getting to them um, with a lot of speed, getting him, uh, them on the back foot, um, being dangerous. And I thought hopefully the Dutch will... Um, Composed themselves soon. No, they didn't. There was a, a huge run down the side. It was uh, Schultz. The ball came to Sané, and he, in typical Sané fashion, pulled it in. Uh, and it speaks for Sané that uh, against Serbia he did not have a great game, and now against the Netherlands, I think he was incredibly dark. Uh, always a threat. So he makes it 1 0 in the 15th, and then the Netherlands woke up. Got stuff going, went forward, um, had huge chances by two by um, our, uh, Ian Barber. The first one, great save by Neuer. The second one, yes, Neuer got in the right position and Barber shoots right at him. I still would give it to Neuer uh, because the positioning game you gotta have, other, otherwise, you're not gonna make uh, that save, and although you were hit on the, on, on the chest. So, at that point, it really seemed like, yeah, the Netherlands, the Dutch are going to get level. And then Serge Gnabry has a moment of genius. I was about to say madness, but it was really genius. I mean, he gets the ball out wide, he dribbles uh, along the box, past a few defenders, and he pulls out a shot into the corner, an absolute laser. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful goal. Uh, has to be said. Uh, make it 2-0 for Germany, which at that time seemed a little bit, uh, yeah, not quite justified, let's put it that way. Uh, I think the Dutch, 1-1 uh, one, one or even 1-0 one for Germany, Ger Germany did play well um, and probably was the better team. I think a lead for Germany would not was ju justified, but not by two goals. At least that's the way I felt about it. Yeah, so 2-0. Uh, going into the halftime and I was pretty down and we we'll, we'll see why because other games really didn't go my way either. Um, second half starts right off the bat, the Dutch completely changed team, uh, putting Germany on the back foot uh, and then Schultz cannot uh, clear the ball uh, nicely, the ball uh, beautiful cross in and the Licht with the header makes it 1-2 in the 48th minute and from that on the Dutch are uh, showing that they are really rejuvenated I want to say um, because you know the last two tournaments they were not present and did not look well this Dutch team showed that they are really really strong side and they got the equalizer through deep high in the 63rd and at that moment you actually were had to believe that the Dutch if someone wins it will be the Dutch they had Germany on the back foot. Uh, Germany didn't get anything going. But two substitutions by Löw actually uh, proved to be the difference. Gündogan and uh, Reus, both which were surprisingly not called up to start. Um, but yeah, it was a pass on Gündogan to Reus, who sees Schultz free in the center, who makes it a 90th minute 3-2. And then it's only two minutes added on time, which is something I have not seen much as of late. And the Germans pull off a huge win for them. Uh, suddenly all the pressure that was building after the Serbia game and, you know, all this, uh, the controversy surrounding the, uh, not nominating the big, the three from Bayern anymore, seems to have dissipated. So yeah, huge win. Uh, from all I've seen from 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 the other uh, team, team teams in the group, I still think that the Netherlands should uh, qualify from that group. They those are really two strong teams, and um, now all results and my Dutch leanings aside, this was a great game to watch uh, in both halves. 
huge chances, great goalkeeping, um, great play forward. And yeah, I'm actually not worried too much about the Dutch for now. But let's see. The other game, Northern Ireland, Belarus ended 2-1. Um, Northern Ireland fully deserved that. That one uh, got the lead and then uh, really weird uh, deflected goal for Belarus. Got the 1-1 and they get the win late. Um, Belarus actually had a huge chance to equalize, but yeah. That was that. So now we can talk about standings already. Northern Ireland is leading the group with six points uh, ahead of Germany because of the direct uh, comparison with the Netherlands. Um, is with three, the Netherlands uh, third, Estonia zero points, and then Belarus. Group E, uh, first game, I actually watched a little bit of Wales, Slovakia. There was not much except the goal in the fifth minute. Uh, both teams had, I think there was a good chance by Slovakia to equalize, but it was mostly Wales who, who was uh, playing. Got a little bit far from the game, not much, because I was doing other things at the same time, but it was on. So Wales, Slovakia, 1-0, and then uh, actually the biggest chopper of the evening, I, I want to say. Hungary, Croatia. We know that Croatia is overplayed a little bit and tired, um, and Hungary uh, dominated the first half most of the time. Uh, but it was Croatia who got the lead through. Um, you know, it was a nice attacking move, but the way that Rebic suddenly was free, and you could see that the Hungarian defender on the other side um, kind of eliminated the offside, and Rebic just had to put it on. But uh, Zalai got the equalizer for a Hungarian team, really, really motivated and putting uh, Croatia thoroughly on the back foot. Um, second half, Croatia was better for the beginning of the half and I saw only, I mean I saw mostly highlights now but I saw the last 20 minutes or so uh, and we'll, we'll see why just in in a bit. Um, and then it was Patkal after a corner where I think it was uh, Jujak who already assisted the uh, Sala goal which was from a cute angle, um, gets the corner in. Um, his initial uh, header is saved, it falls back to him and he just pokes it home. Um, and makes a 2-1 for Hungary and then uh, almost slaps the face. Should have been 3-1 for Hung uh, Hungary, but um, um, no. Rakitic saves it off the line after he actually already kind of messed up before and then uh, wild scenes and the ball doesn't go in. Uh, so the standings here are interesting because we have Pretty much everyone on three points in its own direct comparison. Uh, Slovakia still ahead of Wales because um, of direct comparison. I don't quite understand. I don't quite understand it. Let me check this one actually again. Uh, here. Yeah. Slovakia ahead of Wales. Um, then Hungary. Then Croatia and then Azerbaijan. It's all because uh, Slovakia beat Hung Hungary 2 0. So I guess then it goes down to goal differential if they're all yeah, even. But you know, uh, everyone's on three points, but Wales and Azerbaijan have a game in hand. Group G. Um, Austria had lost the game in Pol uh, against Poland at home. A game where they felt they should have gotten an equalizer and probably uh, deservedly so. They played well in the first half and then uh, there was not much carrying because Poland could adapt. Uh, it was in addition a very iffy game for Austria because the coach of Israel is Andreas Herzog who almost three times almost became the Austrian coach and he's pretty um, not happy about that, let's put it that way. Um, especially um, since he has been seemingly promised, he was always with the Austrian Football Federation. This was the, the job that he wanted to have. That's why he went to America. And now the, Aust the sporting chief that actually oversaw Austria's rise, at least in, you know, in early this decade, uh, and then was unceremoniously fired for some stupid uh, infighting is now the boss in Israel and there's a big Austrian contingent and which is also a little bit iffy because Herzog he he once scored a goal in Israel in the 2002 qual qualification that knocked Israel out and put Austria in the playoffs which they of course lost to Turkey um, uh, it was not a pretty scene uh, so 
the Israelis were also not that quite happy why his head took the coach, but it was. Austria again started the game off well and got the 1 0 through Arnautovic. Um, actually, the ball was stolen from him from Jules, and, but he still. Uh, no one saw him move, moving the box. He was already complaining. Gets a pass from Jules and makes the goal. 1 0. And Austria thoroughly dominated Israel, who had really bad defending, and Austria easily should have made a second goal uh, at that point, but they didn't. And then through the first attack, um, Zahavi gets a header in, and it's 1 1. Austria responds well. Um, has another huge chance. I think it was Arnautovic, then it uh, was a, um, a header on the, on the bar, uh, and another one. I mean, there were two or three severe. There were three huge chances, but you gotta make the 2 1. Because what happens? 2 1 falls for Israel. Uh, again, Zahavi poorly defended free kick, um, and you don't, Israel doesn't know how they are in the lead at halftime. At that point, Austria should have led. Uh, and the problem was that Austria actually felt quite confident because they saw that they are overall the better team. They got a little bit too cute uh, on many occasions. I remember there was an attack by Anatovic where he is juggling the ball two or three times on his head. Also, uh, at, the, at, at the beginning of the game, I don't know what the um, religion Anatovic practices, but he comes off the field like this, almost like he's praying, uh, uh, like a Muslim or, or whatever. It seems I've never seen him do that. Never seen him him do it. It seemed just uh, provoking the opponent, and yeah, it didn't get better. So Harvey scores the third. De Boer, who is playing for Salzburg, uh, makes a fourth, and then Anatovic gets a second one. The late at that point, I had already switched off. Uh, absolutely horrifying show by Austria. Uh, you have to have a really good leader. I, I, I remember they made the 1-0 and said, let's get the two, the second and third rather quick and the game is done. No, it was not done. And I actually want blood. After the, uh, I think all, what hurts me is that this is a talented squad and due to internal infighting, yes, Foda is not the worst coach, but I actually think he cannot get the better, best out of, out, out of the squad. I've seen too much, too much regression, uh, especially uh, already in the Nations League. I don't think it's going anywhere uh, in a good place. I don't think Austria will make the two spots. The other game, Slovenia, Macedonia, uh, Northern Macedonia. <laughs> we have to learn about it. Northern Macedonia. Uh, Slovenia actually was the better team for most, most of the time, had a 1-0 lead. Macedonia equalizes through a deflected shot, uh, and yeah, Slovenia had the chance to win it, but uh, the ball didn't go in, which maybe is a little silver lining, so maybe we can get ahead of Slovenia, but you know, I want to get second. You need to get second in this group. Uh, and Poland gets a scrappy win in the last few minutes. I mean, they had chances, but uh, it took until the 76 minute that Lewandowski finally gets the, the breakthrough. Then uh, a huge chance missed by them, and uh, Glick eventually makes it 84th. Um, 2-0, so we have in the group now Poland leading with 6 points, well ahead. Uh, Northern Macedonia, uh, 4 points. Israel, 4 points, so those are level, but Macedonia scored, I think, more. Slovenia, uh, 2, and Austria and Latvia with 0 points. As I said, I'm hugely disappointed uh, from Austria because this was a highly avoidable win. You were the better team, you had it, and you didn't get it done. So not only do my Dutch, at least the Dutch can lose with their heads held high. Austria, none of that. And then Group I, uh, as quickly told, Kazakhstan could not follow up with the huge win against Scotland. Uh, lost at home to Russia 4-0, a uh, beautiful first goal by Cherishev who got also the second and uh, assisted the third to Juba, and then there was an own goal um, which didn't look that well. Uh, so 4 0 to Russia. That's a statement win, I would say. Scotland bounces back with only a 2 0 to San Marino. They got a very early goal and then um, not much coming. Uh, this is hugely disappointing. I think Scotland is really in danger of not doing well in this group. And then Belgium gets. A very unceremonious 2-0 uh, win in Cyprus. Azar and Bacuay get early goals. 
Uh, I think the first goal there was a little bit controversy because Abachai seemingly got it with the arm, but you couldn't really see it conclusively. I think it was within 25-30 30 minutes, it was 2 0 and then not much coming from there. So Belgium also off to a good start. Uh, six points, Russia three, Kazakhstan three, Cyprus three, Scotland three. San Marino, of course, at the bottom, but I think we know where this is going. Well, let me know which games you watched. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'm still a little bit bitter. This, uh, yesterday, especially the Aust Aust Austria game, killed me. Uh, it would have been nice to see a draw between Germany and the Netherlands, uh, which would have been deserved, but hey, it was at least a good game. And I keep saying this because I thought it says already for the Milan derby that what happened a week ago. So, yep. Anyway, uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos of this. I can be happy too. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.